Hey guys, I've got a couple wreaths today, both heart shaped, one made with a heart wreath frame and made not with a wreath frame. <laughs> I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and thank you guys for joining me today for some farmhouse Valentine's decor. Here are the two frames we're gonna work with. So we've got this main frame, the main frame is a heart wreath from Dollar Tree. And then we've got not a heart wreath. <laughs> we've got two candy cane forms from Dollar Tree. Now I had someone message me that said that they wanted to make a heart wreath, but they didn't have any frames. So I was like, okay, well, what are the chances that you have two candy cane wreath frames? Now from Dollar Tree, I've got these particular frames this year, but they did last year have larger frames. And I noticed that these this year, the frames were much, much smaller. So there are two different sizes. This is the smaller one, which makes a perfect size wreath. In my opinion, this wouldn't really be for a front door. It ends up being a little bit smaller, but what I'm going to do here is you're going to see me take some zip ties and I'm just taking the two end pieces of the candy canes and I'm zip tying them together. Now you have to face one front ways and one back ways, if that makes sense. So you've got the, the rounded part of the front of the frame on your left and the I'd say concaved part of the second frame is the back. So you've got the back facing you and the front facing you in order to crisscross them. And then in order to make the heart look more heart shaped, in my opinion, I pulled the bottom up here and you'll see in a minute, I'm showing you, I bent a little bit and then I'm securing with more zip ties to make sure they don't come apart. And you'll see here, I'm going to slow it down also once I'm done cutting these apart so that you can see here against something with a better background. That is basically the, the main part of securing it with my zip ties, but we're going to add some more zip ties too. And then here's the bottom part. So I brought the tail end of one candy cane up to the crossbar on the other. And that's basically how I'm getting a better heart shape. It's not, it's, it's very, I like, I like my hearts to look plump and fluffy and fat and and, and chubby. I like chubby hearts. <laughs> so I, I went and I pulled the, the one end up and then I'm going to cut off this excess piece here. Now these are wire wreath frames. They are not, they're not exactly, I mean, they're not very frail. And then some of the, some of the Dollar Tree things like the pumpkin one and some other ones, they're very, very thin and they bend very easy. These candy cane ones are pretty, they're decent. I wouldn't say they're hard, but they're, they're not, they're not soft either. So I'm just using my normal wire cutters to cut through this. It did take a little bit of effort, but You'll see here in a second once I'm done struggling with that. If you get the good angle, you get good leverage, you'll be okay. Just takes a little bit of hand strength. Now I've got carpal tunnel issues on both hands. I've had the surgeries back in the day and I still have issues and nerve issues in my hands and I had no problem cutting these apart. But again, these is just my regular wire cutters that I use mostly for my florals. Uh, it shouldn't take any extra effort. Some of the Dollar Tree wreath, wreath frames are much, much thinner. Um, should you choose to use these and you're able to duplicate with these, you shouldn't really have a problem. As I still struggle with that last one, I'm telling you everything is fine, but you're watching me try to cut it and I have no clue why I left that in the video, but <laughs> here we go. Yay, I won. Look, domino. <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna throw away those end pieces there and then I'm just going to continue to secure. Now I did go a little bit zip tie happy or cable tie happy or whatever you decide to call these things. I call them zip ties. I did get a little zip tie happy and um, I'm just tucking the tails into each other. I'm kind of like weaving them around like a basket. I didn't want to cut the tails too short, too short um, only because in my experience, sometimes zip ties, they're just not reliable. So I kind of left them in. And then here I want to show you the difference. So I've got a decent duplicate and you can see there that they're, they're, they're well together. And then what I'm going to do from here is just to secure the bottom, since the very end of it, those are loose pieces of the wire that we cut off the ends of. I'm just taking some masking tape and this is Dollar Tree masking tape. Now it's not the best masking tape, but it gets the job done. You know what I'm saying? It gets it, it gets you to from point A to point B for what you want. So I'm wrapping around and just re securing or reinforcing the area of the zip ties just to make sure that should for some reason a zip tie decide to come undone because that has happened at the most inopportune time most likely when you know your whole project is finished <laughs> and i'm just making sure that that doesn't happen now this looks bad guys this looks like you know really bad with with the with the masking tape but trust me it gets better so now i've got six inch wide burlap now i got this at michael's i have a lot of it if you've watched my videos you know that i have literally 15 million pounds of this six inch wide burlap um i used to use it on my christmas tree what i'm doing here is i am going to just wrap the wreath frame in this so i'm kind of gathering it together i wanted it to be very very 
rustic bundled look of burlap so that way it's thick enough when you're um, just wrapping it around the frame you do not see the frame through it there is no need to wrap the whole frame in anything else or put it down another layer because you don't see the wire through here it's just all in your wrapping and you'll you'll feel it in your hands and you'll know as you're wrapping the frame it's not showing and you're doing exactly how much you need to so you can start to bundle it i kind of gathered it a little bit differently around the um, around the dip in the top of the heart where the two the two candy canes came together I just kind of gathered it a little bit differently and then once we got down to the side again it was just the same twisting method just to get those things covered and then very um, very neatly at the end here we have the the bottom of the heart the little you know the cute little V shape here that's at the end I wanted that to be very neat but I still need to cover up the very end there so you'll see me doing some tucking and folding it's going to be a little different for everyone depends on the medium you use if you're going to use six inch wide burlap you can pretty much almost copy exactly what I'm doing if you have a different type of burlap you can get this burlap anywhere by by the way guys you can get it at burlapfabric.com Michaels Hobby Lobby Dollar Tree has burlap but I'm pretty sure it's not six inch wide I've never seen a six inch wide one there but you can use it and in fact I use something like the Dollar Tree one on my next wreath that you'll see and from here I just tucked it in on the back put on a lot of glue and made sure that all of my little corners and pieces weren't showing and look how cute that is I mean you've got the classic shape so now what we're going to do is we're going to add to this now I was going to use a lot of eucalyptus so you see some eucalyptus here and the eucalyptus did not work out <laughs> it was bad it was very flat so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a really big fluffy bow on the side of my wreath i want this to hang diagonally i'm not going to hang it straight up and down i want it to hang off to the side of the heart so i'm going to make a really big fat bow from the burlap so that's literally just taking a strip of burlap you glue it together on the two ends so you're making a circle or a loop and then you're going to pinch it in the middle like so now here I've got some pretty part fabric, uh, fabric, fabric ribbon that I got from uh, craftoutlet.com. It's I just got it this year and I wanted to add it in the middle. So you're going to watch me here create this bow with the same loop technique where I'm making, I'm taking a piece of ribbon, I'm gluing it in the middle and then I'm pinching it inside of the burlap bow that I'm making, but it does not stay there. And I'll show you and tell you exactly what I did because it's not going to be, it's not going to be shown. The zip tie here was not working only because it was gathering it a little bit too much and then it was actually forcing my bow to go away I wasn't happy with so I took the zip tie off and we're going to attempt to do this again and, you know the first the first zip tie was like your first pancake you know you make your first pancake it's always garbage but it still tastes really good but it's always garbage you end up you don't give that to anybody that you know you want it to look pretty you give that to like you know your family like here's my first pancake <laughs> So taking another strip of burlap and I'm going to tie it around the middle. My original plan was to just tie it around the middle, including the wreath, but it, it felt too bulky for me. So what I'm going to do is wrap it just around the bow itself and then we'll just glue the bow to the wreath. So here I am taking a strip and I'm folding it on itself to make it about an inch wide. And then I'm going to wrap that around the center of the gathered bow that we just made. That way, this is basically the, the middle part of any bow that you would normally see. And you'll see right here once I flip it over lots of glue by the ways and you'll see here there you've got your classic bow shape this is like the perfect like little girls dress bow or you would see this on the back of a, of a I think of dresses or bouquets when I when I see these kinds of bows this is a classic bow very easy very easy now you'll see here now that that ribbon is out I literally just pulled it out of the center there was no glue keeping it down so I pulled the ribbon out and then I cut it open because remember we had glued it into a loop and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just attaching my burlap bow now yes it looks like a lot of burlap and I think it looks great the way it is now I'm going to add this eucalyptus pick but I'm also going to add some more ribbon to the side we'll get to the eucalyptus in a minute I guess I was kind of all over the place when I was making this what I'm going to do with this little bow is I'm going to add it to the bottom so I made an awareness ribbon shape I gathered it in the middle and then I took some grow grain ribbon that I've got from uh, Michael's a while back and I just kind of made loops in my hand pinched it in the middle and then secured that in the middle on top of the heart shaped ribbon and now we have a cute little bow all set up here eventually I end up cutting the tails off of the heart ribbon that I'm afraid isn't isn't actually in the video here for some reason I wasn't able to find that footage I must have decided to do that later when I wasn't recording but all I'm doing is adding this little extra detail to the bottom of our original bow now here I got a little bit of glue on there so I'm just kind of scratching that off and just holding it down and waiting for the glue to solidify 
also, now that we're done with that, it's time to add in our extra little cuteness and our accoutrement. So <laughs> I'm taking a uh, pick that I got from Amazon. You can find in my Amazon store. I love this eucalyptus. It is very, very, very pretty. It's very realistic looking also for being an artificial stem. You get about 18 pieces of them and it's very very affordable for what they are and again if you want to take a look if there's a link in my description and the first pinned comment below to my amazon shop and you can see a lot of the things that i get there now this other one that i'm adding to it was part of a garland that i had cut apart but basically if you just have some extra greenery in your stash or any other type of leaves that maybe came off of another pick or flower bundle feel free to add to your heart's content because your heart including the heart we're making will benefit <laughs> You'll make your personal, it'll make your internal heart happy. And then also your decorative heart happy, if that makes sense. <laughs> makes total sense to me. But <laughs> now we have, um, this is a, a spring pick that I'd gotten from Hobby Lobby year, probably I'm going to say years ago, but they sell them every year. And I just felt like we needed a little bit of white flowers because the hearts in Valentine's kind of leads us into Easter and spring. So this is something that you could still leave out. You don't have to use any type of heart ribbon because it, honestly, this particular item is good for not just Valentine's Day. If you choose to take out the actual heart ribbon you could put another color or another or just buffalo check because that's how i do it you guys know my buffalo check heart is 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 strong on this one but you could do anything for this and the the way the bow looks this i think this would look good in a kitchen it would look good anywhere on a pantry door uh, year round hearts don't only have to be for valentine's day they're pretty much universal but this is how we can either detail it towards the holiday or detail it towards something more for your preferences in your house your style. So here's where I'm done adding everything in. I cut some of the buds off and I just glued them into the flowers, or sorry, into the, the ribbon. And a lot of the eucalyptus I tucked into the folds of the burlap behind it. So it was very easy and very, um, it just came together so fast and easy because of all of the way we, the way we wrapped the actual frame. It was it was like it was meant to happen that way. So I was like, I knew I wanted to tuck it in. And this is how my artist's interpretation of how I wanted to hang this one. So we're hanging it right there by the side. So yeah, that's a nail. But again, if you wanted to put a hanger on it, it would be very easy just to loop some ribbon around there. Or maybe even just put maybe some sort of craft stick or paint stick on the back of it, like a cross to, like a crossbar kind of kind of deal. Or you could even glue in maybe a picture hanger, a sawtooth, a sawtooth hanger type picture deal in the back there to hang if you don't like that. But I love the way this hangs. It's meant to be a diagonal piece. It also looks very good leaning up against a wall or on a tabletop. It doesn't have to be a hanging piece, but it's so cute. It's so warm and so farmhouse and makes me so happy. You guys let me know in the comments how you feel, what you guys think. All right, now here's our second girl. So this is the actual wreath frame from Dollar Tree, heart wreath frame form or heart wreath form that I got uh, in the crafter square section. This one was not in the Valentine section. So I've seen this one pretty much mostly year round. It's not something you have to get during Valentine's. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to fill this in in the middle in a different way. So what I have here is a plastic canvas and I'm gonna stand up for some reason. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. Plastic artist canvas. I got it for $1.95. This is the size I bought. You don't need to buy this size. This was something I'd planned for a different project. But what we're gonna do is we're going to trace it out and cut out the heart shape to fill in the middle of this heart because we're gonna use this plastic canvas as a styrofoam alternative basically because we're going to fill the middle of this heart with re with flowers there's going to be a floral center so um and also not sure if I, I forgot to mention i got this particular plastic canvas at hobby lobby for a dollar 95 it was a few years ago guys probably more than two years this, i want to say it was before covid even so who knows i know that's a bad shouldn't say that word it's a bad word but in any event you can get plastic canvas at any arts and crafts store. You can get them at hobby stores. You can get them at Walmart uh, online. So just get yourself a plastic canvas in the size you think you need. I'm going to trace out the outside ring of the inner ring of the, of the wreath form. And then here, I'm also going to do the same thing on a piece of felt. We are going to use this felt to cover up the back because remember, I need things to look nice and clean and finished. It's my own personal preference. I do not expect anyone to do this this is just an extra step and i'm going to show you guys how i do it in case you like it and see how easy it is now to cover this wreath i have all of these i have four of these i believe i bought a wreath kit from trendy tree a few years ago and i never made the wreath so i have about four or five of rolls of this burlap ribbon it's wired 
Now, if you don't have that, it's special, whatever, you can get this, and this will work just the same. It's called Burlap Crafting Fabric from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. I love it. It's it's very good quality, and it's $1.25, and I'm not mad at that at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you picking up what I'm putting down? You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad. So for this one, there's no other prep for the frame. The frame is ready to go. All we're gonna do is take our ribbon and start on one end, glue it to itself in the center on that center rail, and then just start wrapping it around. And you'll see here how I'm getting a pattern. I'm, I'm staying a little conscious of how wide I'm making these loops and how the pattern will, you'll see the pattern and look here. Isn't that great? Don't you love when you're doing that and you get ribbon with you can tell in the manufacturing process, this is where two pieces stopped and they started. So they did a, yeah, they did a really clean fit there. Yeah. So I cut off the excess fuzzies and then I used a little bit of glue just to make sure that it stayed together. And then from here, I did a little bit of, of folding. You'll see I'm just gathering and pinching and I'm using my left hand in order to hold things in place and get a tighter fit around the, you know, the curvature of the two hearts that, you know, the two tops of the heart. I want to make sure that that V shape is still prominent and that the ribbon doesn't, it doesn't get lost in the ribbon while I'm uh, twisting and, and turning and, and all that good stuff. So it's a little bit of a, of a, of a dance routine, put on a TV show, you know, sit down, have a conversation, listen to some music. Cause it can be, it can be a little tedious sometimes depending on it, how big your ribbon roll is and if it fits. And I don't like cutting things and then having to put them in, in strips. I like using one continuous piece. So this didn't really bother me so much. And here we're back at the bottom again, and I'm just folding and pulling things up to make sure I can get the V at the bottom covered. And then also so that it looks decent and it doesn't look like it's been, you know, for lack of a better term, I didn't want it to look like a wreath diaper. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, I didn't want it to look like I was wrapping the bottom of the wreath up like you would a baby diaper or, you know, whatever, and a, a diaper in general. So it's very, just trying to be very conscious that it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense, guys. Just let me know in the comments if you know what I'm trying to say. So now that we've got it wrapped, look how neat it is. I think it's pretty on its own. You could literally just throw a bow on the side of it or just one flower bud, one flower bloom and a bow and you're done. Or you can tie something on that you can interchange. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these little zip ties here and we're going to secure that plastic canvas to the back. Now, these are six inch zip ties. You can get them anywhere, Amazon. I got mine at the hardware store in like a pack of 300. Now, what I did here was this is not how I left it. This right here is the wrong way, but I want to show you the wrong way so that you don't waste your time and do the same thing that I did. But that's what we're here for. That's at least that's what I'm here for. I'm here to make all these wonderful crafting mistakes in such a wonderful, positive way and then go, well, I get to edit that and they can see how it didn't work out and then they'll know. So I went in from the wreath side and thinking without leaving the plastic canvas there, I just loaded it all up. I ended up taking those out. There's a few here that you can see I've already done, but this particular method right here is the best method. So I take the zip tie and I'm going to show you exactly which way I have it facing. Do you see the top of the zip tie faces you? So the little holes where you're going to put the end in is facing you. You're going to put it through the plastic canvas and then flip it around. And you're going to take that end piece, the tail, and you're going to feed that back through the burlap or the can or sorry, the, uh, the ribbon that you put on or whatever you wrapped it with, or make sure you're putting it around that first rail, which on these types of ribbons, it's easy to see because burlap is natural and has holes in it. And then when you pull that back up through the inside, you're going to then just take the tail, feed it right through the head of the zip tie. And then it's facing inwards. Once you, once you, once I, there you go, struggle bus, struggle bus, push that close, tighten it down. There you go, Whitney. Perfect. And then the tail is facing inward. And of course, we're gonna cover this with glue so you don't have to cut off as much and then it, it's not showing from the front. Now again, I was getting a few wrinkles in my canvas so I had to take some zip ties out because I got zip tie happy once again. But once it's done, this is how many pieces I use to secure. If you wanna pause the video, you can count them. That's it, it it's very simple. Now. To use as a hanger, I'm doing this first so that I didn't actually forget. This is a item that you get on the top of a Dollar Tree sign. You guys, if you're very familiar with that Dollar Tree life and everything that we do, we take things off, we save them. These are the cutest little beaded hangers that you can get on a lot of their different frames and they come off fairly easy, a lot of their signs. It almost has like a shoelace uh, plastic end on it and it just tucked into the burlap or the ribbon there, that burlap ribbon so easily. And then I was able to put a little bit of glue in it and then here I'm holding it to make sure it's secure and she's good to go. 
I did end up taking one of those beads out because it had an odd number of beads. So I have four beads on each side and that's it for the hanger. Now, these are Dollar Tree roses. What we're gonna do is, as you see right here, I'm a little bit behind of myself. I used four bundles of roses. I've got a light peach and a dark peach color. And I am literally taking the bud off of the stem. No, no leaves or anything, just pull the bud off the stem and you're gonna use the bud and you're gonna pop it through that plastic canvas. The natural holes in the plastic canvas are good for this. Now, my plastic canvas had a different meat, had a different intention when I first bought it. And this was a little bit of a, you know, you gotta use a little bit of that upper body strength, you know, as a workout. They say crafting is a workout, right? To pop it through the canvas. So I was using a skewer. The skewer would stretch the canvas out, but not enough. And then at some point I end up just getting a pair of scissors and clipping uh, one of the little crossbars in those, that little plastic canvas in order to push them through and they do just fine. I'm not using any glue yet. You will see where I will apply the glue in a moment, but I'm just showing you, I'm taking my scissors and in order to pop those through a lot easier, I'm only cutting one crossbar and then I'm popping the end of the stem that's left on the back of the bud into that plastic canvas. And it's, look how cute it is. Look how it's taking form. It's like the best part of like those roses that come in the box that say the roses that last for a year that it's very popular and very expensive it's just I love the way this comes together it's like it's like the frosting on a cake but it's the florals it's the florals in the wreath it's it all, it all makes me happy frosting on cakes make me happy too <laughs> so I just was uh popping this through now here's real time I just wanted you to see I was making sure because again you start seeing patterns and things start getting dizzy and you're, you know you're hallucinating in the craft world it's all the hot glue who knows the, f the fumes <laughs> but I just want you to see I'm clipping it and then making sure I'm keeping track of what when I clip now the back of these I took my needle nose pliers and I pulled them tighter and then I took my wire cutters here and I just cut off a lot of the ends to make them a little bit shorter and then I'm putting a decent amount of hot glue on the top of each of those now my hot glue apparently is a uh, I don't know, molten lava hot setting. And so it melted a lot of the, the little plastic stem on the back. And then I'm just kind of drying it a little bit here, but also the glue is seeping through the canvas onto the back of the flower. And then here I'm just taking down the felt that we cut in the heart shape. And then because it's already stuck to the back of the little dabs of glue that we put on the flowers, all you have to do is put a, a line of glue around the outside and your felt is on the back and it covers everything beautifully. Now, I added a little bit of glue inside here and there, just honestly, again, like my last video for S and Giggles. I don't know why I did that, honestly, because the back of it is more than glued. And then I'm taking the leaves from the flower stems that were sitting off to the side, and I'm just tucking leaves in periodically. There's no rhyme or reason. Just do what makes your heart happy. Literally, your heart happy. And then this is a heart. So just do what makes you happy. If you want to put a green leaf in it, don't. If you want to put some berries in it or some of those, you know, pretty vine, it, it, this, you can even actually put some of those LED string lights in this and then secure the battery pack to the back. You could do a lot of stuff with this. But I just wanted to add some greenery in because you guys know I have an obsession with all things green and greenery in general. <laughs> and then here I thought I was done. I was getting ready to go take pictures and then I was going to pick this up for my next project. I was going to make a separate wreath out of this, but these Dollar Tree heart beaded wreaths came out this year and I literally freaked out audibly in the store and I was like, what? And I said that out loud. People were looking at me. And I said, this looks gorgeous. I was sitting it on the table and it set perfectly on top of it. And I'm like, this is exactly what she needs. I didn't know she needed it and I didn't know I needed it. But once I did that, I was like, okay, this is it. This is it. Because the wreath I had planned for it was actually very simple. I was just going to tie these, these arrows you see on the right also at Dollar Tree. Amazing decor they're coming out with guys that for some reason Dollar Tree is not for some reason, but they're listening and they're seeing and they're coming out with some really good stuff. And I mean, you can't be mad for a dollar 25 at all. It's, it's such a great deal. So this is now going to be part of this wreath and I love it to death. So I needed to find a way to secure this on here. So it fits perfectly around the center of this heart. It's, it's like it was meant for them to go together. It was the perfect size. I only had to reshape just a small bit of it, nothing horrible or time consuming. So I was like, let me go get a zip tie thinking that between the beads, it would, it would hide it. It did not hide it, it was too big. So I just went and got my craft wire. This is a 26 gauge uh, craft or floral wire I've had for years, it's a silver one. I didn't use white or black or green because I figured it would show too much and the silver might actually just blend in. It was a very thin wire also. So you'll see me, I just cut a strip of it 
and I fed it through the wreath. Now this is just a little bit of a song and dance with just getting the ends of the wire through your wreath form and then through your burlap and then you'll see me twist them together and then I use my pliers to kind of do another little twisty method and then push them down. I'll show you guys here at the end, I'm gonna do a little slow down and you'll see very close up exactly what they do. Now there's no way to cover these because it was a last moment thought, but I also don't think that they need to be. You guys know how I like to finish the backs of items in my projects. So I don't think that this is detrimental to the back of the project. It would still look very good and very nice if you were needing to put this on like a storm door or a glass window where the back of it might be seen. It's still very neat and tidy, but you guys let me know. I love the fact that these, this beaded heart fits so perfectly. And here I'm just reshaping it just a little bit just to get it in there. And then just kind of, I'll pull some of the petals forward to make sure the beads laying on it, but I didn't have to use any glue. This right here is all you see. See this right here? Perfect. Just a tiny little circle, circlet of, of wire. And then look at it. It's like the perfect addition. This one literally made me so happy. I felt all that, that, you know, that warm squishy craft feeling in my, inside my farmhouse heart when I was making it. This one, lo I love it. Love the burlap, love the flowers, especially the way the flowers are all, you know, squished together in the middle. I love it. And then that beaded heart was just perfect. The way it landed there. It's like one of those things where I literally was just setting down the junk on my table and I'm like, oh, I see something and then a star is born or sorry a heart is born you guys let me know what you think everything here was dollar tree you know you can do everything now i get i used a different ribbon that i had in my stash so please use what you have guys but again these things are all available to you and you would never have to go outside a dollar tree for most of these things because everything i got here was basically dollar tree and that's it for the two projects guys these two girls turned out very wonderful they're very easy and i hope that a lot of you find the way that we can make a heart from the Christmas forms that we have. Now I know those candy cane forms are very popular and some people have bought them in bulk. So if you've got, you know, 10, 20 or 36, a box of 36 of them, you could make a lot of hearts. And also think of this, hearts are also good for maybe 4th of July, Veterans Day, Memorial Day. You could do a, you know, stars and stripe, the American flag theme on it. You can do this for many holidays. It doesn't just have to be for Valentine's. And then also you could do very neutral hearts for your own home decor. Nothing has to say you have to, it doesn't have to scream Valentine's Day. But these right here, these girls make me so happy. So you guys let me know how you feel. You guys tell me what you think. Now, I have a coffee page and I want to thank everybody who has donated to me and kept me running. All of your donations when you buy me a coffee keep my channel going. I'm able to buy more supplies and maintain the channel. So thank you all so much. If you're not able to supply, or sorry, if you're not able to donate monetarily the youtube things help me just as much make sure you comment say hi just even leave a small emoji that lets youtube know that you like me which is not a lie because you do like me because you're still here listening hopefully please stay <laughs> and then that helps the algorithm suggest me to more people and helps my channel grow so with all that being said i thank you guys so much for all of your support for you guys continuing to show up every week and just being wonderful and just for being you so Thank you so much. I love you guys more than I can possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.